In this video, we're going to talk about wood stove and wood combustion technologies. The question came up on a prior video on what's the difference between catalytic and non-catalytic. So I thought what I would do in this video is just share what I know from experience and from my own research on the difference between these different combustion technologies. Now we're going to start um, with this Ashley fireplace insert behind me. This one's no longer in service and this doesn't have any sort of secondary type combustion uh, system incorporated into it to clean emissions. Again, all of those systems, catalytic, non-catalytic, it's all about cleaning the emissions to meet modern EPA certification limits. This unit here is from the 70s and it doesn't have that and therefore is less efficient. So let's go ahead and take a look inside and see how this one works. Now, as an insert, this is more efficient than an open fireplace, but really the only benefit is that this is a metal box in the fireplace, and because of that, there's a blower that's able to circulate air around it. Otherwise, you've got your air inlets right there. These doors don't necessarily seal all that well. And when we look inside here, and you can't really see necessarily, but up in the back, it just vents up the chimney. There's no um, sort of baffle, nothing to kind of connect to a stovepipe or anything like that. It just vents up the chimney. So to get a light in here and show this, basically you've got an opening on the right and an opening on the left that vent the smoke out of this firebox. And so if you're burning in this Ashley insert, essentially your fire is right here and it's just not on the masonry fireplace, it's inside this metal box so that this heats up and allows the blower to circulate heat in the room. So older wood stoves are just like that Ashley insert. They primarily operate just by venting the smoke straight out of the firebox and there's no additional systems within the unit um, to essentially clean the emissions or trigger a secondary or a tertiary type combustion of the flue gases. So now we'll look at um, a catalyst, then we'll talk about the uh, non-catalytic systems, and then finally we'll look at the hybrid system. Now a catalyst in a wood stove works very much the same way as the catalytic converter in a car. Essentially it's coated with a, a, a substance that basically reacts with the, the smoke or the flue gas and causes it to burn or combust. Now this gets more energy out of the wood as well as clean up the emissions that are going out the chimney, which of course is the goal. Now wood on its own, that flue gas would normally combust at a temperature of around 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. With the catalyst, you can trigger off that combustion at a lower temperature, generally around 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you can actually burn a cooler, slower burning fire, a little bit more smoldery, get that temperature up, and once that catalyst is lit off, it will continue to burn and clean the emissions. Whereas if you don't have a catalyst, you have to get those temperatures up or above 1100 and keep them there in order to keep that combustion of the flue gases going. So let's take a look. This is a Woodstock Soapstone Ideal Steel behind me. It's actually a hybrid stove, but I can show you what a catalytic combustor looks like. So this is the catalyst, catalytic combustor in the Ideal Steel. Now you can see this one happens to be a stainless foil, and again, it's coated. Other stoves use something that's ceramic and looks like a honeycomb. But basically the flue gas comes through all those little passages and as it does so, it's going through that um, catalyst and will combust. Now catalytic stoves are a little bit more complex than non-catalytic stoves in that you cannot start your fire and have your flue gas coming through the catalyst. Essentially, it, it won't light off and therefore it Im would impede draft and actually clog up. So you have to have something called a bypass. And so that's what this lever does right here. And if I lift this lever up, it will put the stove into bypass mode. And I just wanna show you on this model what happens for that. So when I lift this up, notice the catalyst moves back 
and now it opens up this passageway here straight down into the firebox. You can see a little bit of the fire brick and the ash grate right there. And so this is um, now letting the smoke come up and bypass the catalyst and continue on into the back to the flue. Now, as we look down in here, the thing to note is there is a gasket down in here. So uh, regardless of how the catalyst works, you've got an additional mechanism and an additional gasket to maintain in a catalytic stove. Not only that, these combustors don't last forever. You probably get around 14,000 or so hours of burn time out of them, and then they need to be replaced because the um, chemical nature of it is no longer going to function effectively. So again, these things don't last forever. This is a maintenance item, and these, um, similar to a catalytic converter in a car, are not necessarily cheap. Um, the benefit of the combustor is you do get higher efficiencies out of the stove, which in theory lets you save on wood. Now the proponents of the catalytic stove would say the money that you save on wood, you know, yeah, you've got to pay for the combustor, but it, it, it's a worthwhile trade-off given the savings in wood. Um, others will say, you know, it's not worth it, it's just more complex, stick with the non-catalytic system. Um, this does generally give you cleaner emissions when you have a catalyst. However, there are exceptions. So that's the um, catalytic system. Now we'll look at a non-catalytic secondary combustion system. What I've done here is draw a diagram that's basically showing a side view of a typical wood stove. So we've got our loading door over here. This is the bottom of our firebox here. Our flue exit is up here. Now in terms of other parts here, this line coming across at an angle is the baffle. And then each of these circles is representing a secondary air tube. Now many non-catalytic stoves use tubes to let in secondary air. Some use a flat plate baffle, but they all inject air into the top of the firebox. Now with a non-catalytic stove, generally air enters the firebox in three places. You'll have a primary, air entry down near the bottom, which fuels basically primary combustion on the wood. You'll have air coming in as a wash over the glass on the door to help keep it clean from building up of uh, black uh, creosote and such on the glass. And then your, your secondary air comes in through these perforated tubes in the top of the firebox. Often these things look like the burner on a gas grill. They basically have a series of holes along them. And what happens is the air comes in and once the temperatures are sufficiently high, basically secondary combustion requires around 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when the smoke will ignite. When those temperatures are achieved, the air coming in here will ignite that smoke and these will essentially look like a gas burner and with throwing flames forward in the direction like those arrows are pointing. And so it's all about the dwell time for the smoke. And so what the baffle does is keep the smoke down here in the firebox so that it has to take a more convoluted path to get up and out the flue exit. And that is what allows time for that smoke to ignite and then burn. And that's what cleans the emissions and boosts the efficiency of the unit. And so just to show you what these look like in real life, I'll show you a couple pictures of the Regency I-2400. I don't have access to that unit um, now. We actually sold that, that house. Um, but that's what this little sketch is based on. And so I'll show you what that looks like in real life. Now, as those images showed, you can see the baffle in the top of the firebox. You can see those tubes with the holes. And again, if you're burning in a unit like that, flames, once it lights off, the secondary combustion lights off, flames will come shooting across the top of the firebox from those tubes. And you get a lot of heat. Um, in my experience, sometimes if secondary really lights off well, the fire can feel a little bit hard to control if you have a very strong draft in your chimney just because it gets very hot and it's in intentionally burning hot. 
on these certi new EPA certified stoves, you actually cannot shut the air down or shut it off all the way like you can on this old Ashley behind me, where if you just screw those things closed, you're shutting off all the air. On modern stoves, there is a certain minimum air inlet um, that allows a minimum level of air in there all the time to make sure that combustion continues in a clean manner. It's all about cleaning those emissions and getting the efficiency. And so that, if you have a strong draft, um, means that you're gonna be pulling more through it and you can have your wood burn faster, you're gonna see shorter burn times and those kinds of things because of that. So non-catalytic stoves are great. Um, they're very, very simple. You generally just have a single air control and that's it, that's all you have to worry about. Um, they don't get quite as efficient usually and they don't get quite as clean emissions uh, usually as the catalytic stoves do. Um, but in terms of simplicity and, and those sort of general routine maintenance tasks and costs, they're fantastic. Um, uh, they're really, really hard to beat in that regard. So, um, you know, if you're new to wood burning, they can be a good way to go. Um, but really anything with the learning curve is, will work. I showed the combustor system on the ideal steel behind me when I was describing catalytic technology, but the ideal steel is actually a hybrid stove, meaning it's making use of that catalytic technology with the combustor, but it also has secondary combustion that goes on in the firebox. So I'll show you what the baffle system within the ideal steel looks like um, and how that contrasts a little bit with the regency that we saw in the prior images. So. Um, I'll go ahead and flip the camera around, open the door, and we'll take a look inside this firebox. As we look inside the firebox on the Ideal Steel, you can see this stainless steel plate up top that's perforated. That plate is the baffle, and in this case, all of those holes are the secondary air inlets for secondary combustion. Now to trigger off secondary combustion here in the firebox, those temperatures need to get up to around 1100 degrees. However, for the catalyst to operate, the flue gas only needs to be about 500 degrees. So what this does is essentially make use or allow making use of both technologies. So the secondary combustion in the firebox is gonna give you a nicer look in terms of the flames because you're gonna get flames kind of coming from the top as that flue gas burns. And you'll also have potentially your primary combustion flames down here off of the wood burning in the firebox. If you just had a straight catalytic stove, you're only going to have your primary combustion down at the wood, and then your smoke is going to head on up here to the catalyst. Um, and that's where all of the cleaning is going to take place in terms of uh, burning that flue gas and, and cleaning up the emissions. So that's a look at the hybrid. Again, different types of baffles. This one's stainless steel. A lot of units use some sort of um, ceramic or, or brick that's on top. And a lot of um, secondary combustion systems utilize tubes like the Regency that I um, showed. But there are different designs for different manufacturers. And so sometimes people will say it's a tube stove referring to a um, secondary combustion system, a non-catalytic secondary combustion system, but not all non-catalytic stoves use tubes. Um, this system here uh, with the flat stainless baffle like this is one example. So that sums up um, the hybrid. And again, the idea with the hybrid is you sort of get the best of both in terms of you get some more flames to look at and sort of add that ambiance as well as you get the clean emissions and efficiency coming from the catalyst. So that'll do it for this video on wood combustion technologies via different wood appliances. Hopefully this was helpful to you. I know there are different videos on this subject out there on YouTube. Definitely check those out if you're looking at buying a new stove or insert and are curious about how the technologies work and definitely talk to someone at the selling dealer as well. But hopefully this just provides you with some additional context based on my experience and what I have learned through research. Again, that's all I can share as I'm not a design engineer or an expert in hearth systems. 
Um, but hopefully my experience is valuable to you.